We are still proceeding with the kale production and it is a journey that we have, we have come from uh, seed germination at the nursery. At the nursery level, we have management aspects such as disease control, pest control and nutrition. Then once the seedlings are mature, that is after four weeks, then we have what we call transplanting. And once transplanting is done, but of course before transplanting, as I explained before, uh, we have uh, a nutrition aspect of it where the fertilizer, what we call the phosphatic fertilizer is applied. I'm going to talk about it uh, in a bit uh, during the nutrition in the starting stage. I know after transplanting, uh, what we call dates after transplanting, the, the day when the, the seedlings are transplanting, uh, transplanted, that is what we call day zero, day, day zero after transplanting. Now, from now day zero up to day 21 after transplanting, that is what we call the starting stage. And uh, during the starting stage, there are uh, many aspects that uh, we are going to look at. One being nutrition, the other being pest control, disease control, and also weeding. Those are the management, management aspects we are going to look at. Apart from uh, this management aspect, it is good to know what is happening inside the plant at this juncture. The plant has already been uh, removed from the nursery. Remember at the nursery level, there were a lot of uh, management that was done there. Watering was done. Care, good care was being taken care of. Uh, of, of these seedlings and once it is transplanted in the field you find that at the field it is a new environment where the sun is uh, quite hot water is not done regularly and you find uh, the even the nutrition part of it the, uh, the plant has to find nutrient in the soil so you find it's a bit different and we have what we call uh, acclimatization uh, to this environment, from the nursery environment to uh, the land environment where the plant is transplanted. And therefore during this time, remember the plant has already developed some roots, it has developed some shoot. That was necessary during the nursery stage. But here, once it is here, one thing it will need good watering so that it can continue uh, developing and taking nutrients. The roots are going to develop within these 21 days. The roots are going to develop so that uh, it can de develop the main root and also it can uh, develop the lateral roots or what we call the root hair cells. Those are the ones that usually take water and nutrients into the plant. The other bit is on in the terms of the stem. The stem is also going to uh, develop, is going to grow uh, in terms of the width and uh, it's also going to elongate and uh, by so doing it's going to uh, support more leaves then we have the main shoot the main shoot um, initially from the nursery you already have uh, uh, two or three leaves and uh, these two three leaves uh, maybe maximum of five when transplanting you find now when you have transplanted it's going to uh, to develop more leaves, more new leaves. And in so doing, between the time you transplant and 21 days, you find uh, there are other leaves that will have developed, whereby by 21 days the plant will have more than 10, even 20 leaves. And therefore, that is the development milestone that happens. And to support this, you have to support this with the uh, aspects that uh, we have mentioned. Let me start with uh, the nutrition part of it. And the nutrition part of it, remember, we have already done it. We did manuring uh, before transplanting. We also did application of phosphatic fertilizer. And phosphatic fertilizer is because uh, that is the nutrient that is needed by this plant so that it can be able to develop the roots and also the stem and the, also the shoot. It is a nutrient that is needed uh, in this development. And since a soil test was done, the soil test that was done will determine the amount of phosphatic fertilizer to apply per acre or per plant. And once this is done, uh, then 
the plant will be able to uptake the, requ uh, the required uh, uh, phosphatic fertilizer. And this phosphatic fertilizer, as mentioned, it is put on the ground, uh, on the hole, planting hole, mixed together in the soil, so that when this seedling is transplanted, it will start immediately to uptake the, the, the phosphorus via the roots. And once it takes via the roots, then it gets into the plant and uh, it is, uh, the plant uses it for development and, and for building up of energy. And therefore, that, that, that nutrition bit is already covered. But now we have the other bit, what, what, what we call the uh, secondary supplementation. The uptake of the nutrient from the soil via the root is what we can term it as primary uptake of nutrients. But now we have now the secondary supplementation because you find the plant may not, since the seedlings are still young, they may not take enough nutrients from the soil because, you know, the roots are not yet very well developed. But once the roots are very well developed, they are going to take all the nutrients that it needs. But at this stage, then secondary supplementation is important so that the plant can be able to uptake uh, via the leaves the nutrient that it requires. And here we have a foliar fertilizer we call a uh, starter foliar fertilizer. And starter foliar fertilizer is a foliar fertilizer. And remember foliar fertilizer is a, uh, uh, is a fertilizer that you spray on the leaves and then the plant is going to take uh, via, via the leaves. And the starter foliar fertilizer is rich in phosphorus. It has other nutrients, uh, nitrogen and, phosphor and, and potassium in uh, small amounts, but the key ingredient or the key nutrient here is uh, phosphorus. And phosphorus is because so that it can be able to supplement, to be able to support the root development, the stem development, and also the shoot development. And that is the supplementation that is required. And there is also something, that, something else when you are talking about uh, uh, nutrition. And here we have something we call trans transplanting shock. And transplanting shock is that aspect where the plant doesn't grow very well because uh, it has been uprooted from the nursery, brought in the field where the environment is different, the care has reduced, uh, the nutrient supplementation uh, has uh, reduced also. And you find also there's some injury because when you are uprooted from the, from the nursery, there are some injury on the leaves. And all these aspects make the plant to have some shock. And this shock makes the plant not to grow in a required manner. And here is where we, ha we come with a, um, a product we call a biostimulant. A biostimulant is basically a nutrient product or a product that we can see is a, is a foliar, is a fertilizer, but a natural fertilizer. The origin of it could be a, a seaweed or amino acid or protein based origin. And therefore by applying this, this biostimulant and how it is applied, you put in a pump and then you drench. Drenching is uh, directing the spray at the base of the plant such that around the base of the plant, the soil around the, uh, the base of the plant has this product and the, the plant is going to uptake this product via the roots. And once this is done, once the plant uptakes this uh, biostimulant, it's going to enhance growth in the plant. And by enhancing growth, it means the plant will have more energy, it will have more food production. By so doing, it will be able to shed off the transplanting shock. Because if this is not done, all the, ed all the energy that the plant produces will be geared towards eliminating the transplanting shock. So you're going to see like a week or two of the plant not growing. But once this is done, about stimulant is used, it enhances growth, and you find that the plant will start uh, uh, growing very well. After around three days, it will have shed off the, the shock and the plant will start growing very well. And therefore that is very important so that you don't lose maybe a week or two due to transplanting shock.